Hello everybody and uh, welcome to another uh, Kangaroo English Live class. Uh, my name is Christian and today is uh, Wednesday, the best day of the week. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, so recently I've been a little bit sick, <clears throat> like a, a head cold. Um, but, uh, but today I'm feeling a little bit better, so, uh, but you'll, you'll probably notice that my, um, my voice is a little bit, uh, strange today, uh, and, and so I thought it would be an interesting, an interesting opportunity to, to talk about pronunciation and voice, so, that's what uh, that's what I want to do a little bit uh, today to talk about pronunciation. Um, but but first, I'd like to to warm up. I'd like to warm up uh, playing some games. Uh, so hello to um, hello to Platoon Gamer, hello to Tobias, uh, Lena Abiuk, uh, Olya Onishchuk. Um, Seville Scoob, Rodolfo, uh, Gavilan, Gilmar Santos, Loli Loli, um, Elena L, Andre, uh, David Ferreira, uh, so many, uh, so many people here. It's great, uh, great to see you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let, let's start by, let's start by playing some games. Let's start by playing some games. So... Uh, I thought we would start by playing another round of uh, Linky. So, Linky is this game where we have we have four questions. Okay, we have four questions, and the answer <clears throat> the answer to each question creates a, a link. Right, creates a link. Um, so, hello world. Let's have a look at the. Uh, uh, so we need to we need to find the answers to the four questions, and then we also need to to, to work out the link, right? So, uh, <coughs> okay. So let's do let's do number one. Number one. The question is, um, if you have a a book uh, a hardback, so you know there are there are two. Two types of books. Uh, there's two two types of kind of book productions. There's a book like this, which is a softback. No, softback. Oh no, it's, it's, not, it's not called a softback. It's called a paperback. A paperback is when the um, you know, when the 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 cover okay is paper. Is paper, and then you have a uh, hardback. Um, I don't actually. Let me get a hardback book. Uh. <coughs> okay, this this is a hardback, right? Right. It's um. It's uh, made out of. Uh, card or something. And then you have this thing, right? You have this thing. The question is, the question is, what do you call this? What do you call this? Ooh. 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 It's a good question. Um, an interesting fact, interesting little fact, is that it's cheaper, it's cheaper to make a hardback than a paperback. It's cheaper because the this 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 oops this <laughs> this type of um, binding, okay, this type of um, the way they join the pages is is cheaper. So this is when the publisher of the book makes real money, right? 
little buddy. Okay, so lots of people uh, with answers to the questions. Uh, hello to Max in New Zealand. Okay. Uh, so um, let's see, a sleeve, uh -huh. a cover, cover sheet, super cover, wrapper, book cover, uh, cover. Okay, so nobody, nobody knows this, um, this particular, this particular uh, vocabulary. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you a clue. Okay. <laughs> I don't actually know how to. Uh, <laughs> um, that's. Penguin, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's a penguin, so that maybe might help. Uh, <laughs> that might help uh, because a lot of people... Oh, okay. I'm really sorry, but I don't know because your, your name is written in the Cyrillic alphabet. I don't know how to say it. Um, something Matt, Matt Kopsch been, she called it a book jacket. Ooh, ooh, um, which is very close. It's actually called a dust jacket. A dust jacket, right? Which I think is, I think it's such a cool name because it's a bit like the book... You know, this is the book Naked, right? This is the book when it's naked. It's um, <laughs> it's 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 not wearing any clothes, and then we're gonna put a jacket on it. We're gonna dress it up in a little jacket. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, and and I, you know, I I wonder if um. I wonder if it's called a dust jacket because, uh, of the respect, you know. The respect we have um, for the, um, you know, for the book, right? It's not, it's not a cover. It's a jacket. Like a book is something special, right? Uh, somebody said dust cover. Uh, okay, so the answer, the, uh, the word we're looking for is dust. Okay, number two, number two, number two. Question number two. This is a good one. What is the surname? What is Oops, I should turn this back on. What is the surname of the founder? Great vocabulary. Of the founder of Microsoft. The surname of the founder of Microsoft. Now, think about this, founder. I mean, it's a great word. It's like because you're, you're making the... You're making the foundations of the company, right? And also you are kind of discovering something that's, that's new, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, okay, so this is an easy one. <laughs> Actually, there's um, lots of people... Uh, Lots of people have been sharing a TED talk that Bill Gates did maybe, I don't know, I think it was in 2015, maybe, four or five years ago. It was a TED talk that he did about, um, uh, about, about viruses, how a virus pandemic could, could, could you know, uh, take over the world. And here we are. Okay, so, uh, very good, very good. That was easy, Gates. Ooh, okay, number three. What is the name of the book written by uh, Leo Tolstoy in 1869? 1869. You know, you're very right, Roxana and Emanuela. We cannot forget about Paul Allen. 
What a legend. Paul Allen, what a legend. Uh, excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Fearless Girl says his name is William Henry Gates. Man. Like, with, with a name like that, of course you're going to be rich. Of course. I mean, there are no people living on the streets <laughs> called, called William Henry Gates, okay? William Henry Gates are not poor people. You know, they're, they're, they're wealthy. Okay, so that was also easy, right? War and Peace, of course. War and Peace, famous, uh, famous book. So here's a question. Here's, here's a question for some of the really, you know, really intelligent uh, students out there today. Who knows the link already? What is the link between dust and gates and war? What's the link? Does anybody know? <laughs> um, no, no, I am not sick with the coronavirus. No. Uh, Thank you, Greek Alex. War and Peace is a very boring book. I don't know. I've never, I've never tried to read it, but you know, it's like this, right? It's like, like huge. Ah oh, man, ah oh, man, genial wolf, genial wolf. What a legend! And also Valeria Petrone. Very nice. And another name in Cyrillic that I cannot read. Um, Marco Martini, very good. The link, of course, is stars. So we have Stardust, right? Stardust, we have Stargate, and we have Star Wars. <laughs> um, and again, if, we, you know, if we're not sure about the meaning of, of a word then your, you know, your best friend can be Google Images, right? So if we Google image, uh, for example, star dust, then you can see that it is the name of a film, right? Oh. Based on what? Is it? Uh, well... But, but also Stardust is, is literally this stuff, right? It's like the dust, the dust, the little pieces that, that make up the universe, right? Um, so, so that's Stardust. Uh, Stargate, do you remember that? Uh, do you remember that series? Wow, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. that brings back memories. Look at that. Stargate, I remember when this was on television. Uh, and of course, Star Wars. Star Wars. Oh, there it is, of course. The classic. <laughs> the classic. Um, so, Andre Cavanista is asking about the difference between a film and a movie. Uh, they're just, um, there's, there's no difference really. Um, I mean, they're exactly the same thing. Uh, I think mainly it's a regional difference. Like in, I think probably, you know, in my anecdotal experience, um, people in Australia, for example, prefer to say movie. Um, perhaps in the US, I don't know. Um, but in... Um, uh, but in but in Britain, I think they'd prefer to say film, you know. So it would be it would be regional. Um, so I, I wanted to I wanted to because you can you can see that I have a 
really bad infection or a bad throat infection and um and also my, so my ears are blocked and also my um you know i'm congested right congested now the result of this is that my voice is is altered right my voice has changed and in fact uh yesterday i was driving i was driving and i said to my telephone i said okay google and because my my voice is so is so different my phone didn't recognize when i said this right my so i, I want to talk about why i want to talk about why i sound different so here I have my beautiful, my beautiful model, right? So, so basically down, down here we have the, um, the vocal cords, right, more or less. And the air can pass, the air can pass through here over the tongue and come out of the mouth, right? Or the air can come up here into this space and come out of the nose. So we have... Two, two possible places for air to escape, right? Now, at the moment, because I'm congested, because here, because here is all blocked, is all blocked, it means that those sounds which, which normally come out of my nose, they, they can't come out of my nose, right? And that's one of the reasons why I sound different. So, for example, let, let's look at some some specific um, some specific sounds, right? So, we have M and N, and then we have uh, this one here, right? So, so the first sound, okay, the first sound, the M. It's really important that that the sound comes out of the nose, right? These are all these all of these three sounds, okay? These three sounds, they are nasal sounds. So it means that the air should pass through our our our, our nose completely, right? Now, because because we want we want the sound to come out of the nose. We need to block the air coming out of the mouth, right? Simple. We need to block it. So, how can we block? How can we block the sound coming out of here? So, we need to use we need to use some part of our anatomy, right? So we can use our lips to block the sound. We can use our tongue to block the sound. They are basically the only moving parts of our anatomy to block air, right? So with an M, with an M, with this, with this first sound here, okay, we want to use our lips, okay? Our lips should be completely closed. So all of the air passes through our nose, right? Mm. <laughs> now, at the moment, because I'm sick, right, because, because this is blocked, the air can't pass through my nose because it's blocked. So you can hear my M is very quiet. <laughs> I'm really trying. <laughs> okay, so it's so it's blocked. But when you do it, you should you should hear right that sound. And so um, this this is an example of a word that's quite difficult for a lot of a lot of um, a lot of learners. Okay. And it's difficult for two reasons. The first reason is because we have an S and an M together. Okay, we have these two, these two consonants together with no vowel. So it's kind of like gymnastics, right? Oral gymnastics. Um, and the second one is because it finishes, it finishes on that, that closed mouth. So it feels strange, right? So, but... When you finish that word, okay, when you finish that word, your mouth should be closed. Tourism. Okay? If, you're, if your mouth isn't closed, it's not correct. Tourism. Okay, now, 
for example, in my experience with, with Spanish learners, because it's not very common to finish a word on a consonant, you know, most Spanish vocabulary finishes with a vowel, like turismo, right, for example, right? Because it's uncomfortable, what, or it feels strange, what a lot of Spanish people do is they substitute the M for a sound that's similar. A sound that's similar, which is our N, right? They'll substitute... So this, for example, would be... This is the English word finishing on, on a consonant. This is the Spanish word finishing on the, um, on the, um, on the vowel. Okay, and so... Yeah, so, so a lot of Spanish speakers will substitute this for this because with the N, the mouth is open, right? So with the M, with the M, we use our lips to create the obstruction, right? <laughs> right? But with the N, we're going to use our tongue. We're going to touch, we're going to touch our tongue here, on the roof of the mouth to make the N, right? We can touch, touch just behind the teeth. Here's our teeth here, this white thing. Oops, here. Here's our teeth. We're going to touch our tongue here, just behind the teeth, right? Mmm, mmm. Now the tongue is completely blocking. Mmm. No, no air is coming out of my mouth. Mmm, mmm, mmm. But it's a different sound. Listen. Similar but different, right? So, if I'm uh, if I'm teaching you pronunciation, I can actually see if you're pronouncing correctly. I can physically see it, right? I can see it. So, if you're saying if you're saying this word and your mouth is open at the end, it's not correct. You're saying tourism. Right? Don't do that. <laughs> okay. And finally, finally, we have this. Um, we have this this sound here. This is the this is the the vowel that you will f find. Oh, the vowel. This is the consonant that you will find, for example, in this. Right. The ng sound. Oh, like a, like a, oh, like this one, for example. Look at that. It's got two. Two of them, right? Um, <clears throat> so, this is a little bit different. What's the difference? The difference is, again, the difference is where we block the sound. Okay, so the, the ooh, okay, the ooh. We're not, we're not making contact here. Okay, we're not making contact here with our tongue. We're making contact here at the back. It's a different point of contact. So, it's mmm. Mm, mm. Okay, so the tongue, the tongue comes back to make a block, back like that. Not up, not up, but back. So, different sound. Mm, mm, mm. But all of this should be coming through your nose, okay? Hong Kong, sing. <laughs> um, and, and so that's... That's one of the reasons why I sound strange today is because the sounds that normally come out of my nose, because my nose is blocked, I have to keep my mouth open and I have to allow that air to come out of my mouth and it's a different sound, right? Totally different sound. So, and of course, the second reason, second reason is here in vocal cords, right? In our vocal cords. Um, Remember that to make to make sound, we have to vibrate, right? Our our vocal cords, and because my my vocal cords are are swollen and irritated, they can only make slow vibrations, <laughs> right? They 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 can't do the very high frequency, right? So 
my voice is really low, right? Uh, all of my voice, the tone of my voice is low. Let's um, let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at what I'm talking about. So this is tone, and this is time. Okay, tone. I'm sorry about the quality of my writing. I need to improve that. Tone, there we go. So, you know, let's say that normally my, my normal voice is here, right? At the moment it's here. It's, it's not, ah, it's lower. And this is, this is important because when we're, when we're using language, when we're using pronunciation, we, we use, we change our tone um, for, for various reasons. Like, for example, um, in general, if we're asking a question in English, then it will go up at the end like this, okay? This, this type of pronunciation indicates a question, right? So, for example, um, do you like pizza? Right? Do you like pizza? Uh, okay, this, this rising tone at the end indicates a question. Do you like pizza? Right. Now, <laughs> some dialects, for example, Australian English, Australian English do this with almost all sentences. Okay, it's actually called, uh, it has various names. Okay, some people call it AQI, which is Aust uh, uh, Australian Question intonation, right? Uh, oops. Uh, but my favorite, my favorite name for it is just up talk. Oops. Up talk. Up talk is basically when you go up at the end of all of your sentences. So you can find this type of intonation. You can find it in Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh, some dialects of of uh, American English, like for example, California Valley Girl, they go up at the end, like, oh my God, are you serious? Oh my God. <laughs> <And anyway. laughs> um, but but um, in, in other dialects, like for example, in British English, it's much more common to find the opposite, okay? In, in British English, in general, again in general, you can find that the intonation does this, okay? So, you know, people, you know, if they're, if they're saying a sentence, they'll say, um, well, I went, I went to the shop to buy a bike. <laughs> right? so, I went to the shop to buy a bike. It goes down at the end instead of up. It's the total opposite. And... These are the really important things to notice when you're studying pronunciation, right? It's about noticing. And, you know, if you, if you plan to use your English with, you know, more, let's say, more Americans in California than people from London, then you might want to practice bringing in some of that that intonation that rising intonation you might want to you know you might want to do this instead right you want to do California up here right uh, but if you're if you're moving to London you might want to do a London intonation it's it's part of it's part of noticing and part of being a good a good user of 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 um, of, of language and I, I wanted to I wanted to talk a little bit because I'm I'm really fascinated by sound symbolism. Okay, so there's a really famous experiment in sound symbolism called um, well I'm gonna draw I'm basically gonna do a little bit of a drawing here. Okay.
I've talked about this in a previous video, right? Now, let, let's imagine that these, these two shapes, these two shapes have names, right? These two shapes have names. Uh, the names are um, Booba and Kiki. So the question is, okay, the question is, which one of these shapes would you call Booba? Uh, and which one of these shapes would you call Kiki? Okay, so just, just think about that. Think about that for a minute. Think about if you if you had to give these shapes a name, which ones would be Booba and which one would be Kiki? And you know, all of the research shows that you know, people agree. In general, people very, very much agree on which one is Booba and which one is Kiki. Right. Um, excuse me for a moment. Ah. Damn it. Yeah, exactly. So the cloud is Booba and the star is Kiki. Kiki's the spiky one. Booba's the left one. The cloud is Booba. Booba's the first one, right? Because the round one is Booba, right? Now, why? Right? Why, why do we all agree on this? It... It seems that um, humans, you know, part, part of sound symbolism is imitation, right? Imitation. So if something is round, if a shape is round, right, like this, like this cloud, if a shape is round, then we, we want to, humans want to make round shapes with their mouth, right? We want to go boo. We want to do this. And then it has a sound. It has a round. It sounds round, right? Boo. But then the other one, this spiky one, is kind of like, you know, it's like attacking a kick, 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 right? It sounds, it sounds like it looks. It's a strange, strange phenomenon. And, and this is true. This is true. It doesn't matter if what your native language is. Your native language could be Russian or Mandarin or whatever. You feel, you feel the same, it's a human thing. And there's lots of research about, um, about sound symbolism. And th this one here was really fascinating, right? This one here. Brain activity related to sound symbolism, cross-modal effect of an orally presented phoneme on judgment of size. And basically, Basically, what they discovered was, you know, there, there's other there's other types of um, sound symbolism, right? Like, for example, they discovered that b and d and g, right? B and d and g. Let me just bring up my uh, my screen here. Okay, so these sounds they are generally used for words that are kind of big, big and strong. And the the phonemes um, per, to, and ker were generally used for things that were smaller. Okay, so big and small. So there, there seems to be some subconscious, you know, some subconscious thing that's, that's universal in, in humans, which, which, um, which is, uh, which, which talks about size, right? Sound and size. And th to me, this is a, this is a, a, a fascinating world, right? A fascinating world because, um, it's kind of something universal that we have as humans, right? So it's awesome. Um, Gus, Gus and Caleb, who is bigger? I mean, that's a, that's a great example, right? If you have a guy called Gus and you have a guy called Caleb, right? <laughs> which, which one of these people is the huge, muscly gym guy, right? 
And which one of these is is the is the you know is the skinny guy? In fact, let let's take a little risk here and let's um let's just see if this if this plays out in in the real world. Okay. So here's Gus. <laughs> right? Here's Gus. This guy's Gus. This guy's Gus here. There's Gus. Okay. Uh, this guy's Gus. Oh, of course, he's from um, he's from Breaking Bad. There's another guy called Gus. Another guy called Gus. Okay, well, they're not exactly they're not exactly huge, scary people, are they? Okay, now let's look at Caleb. Well, actually, I think in this case, you know, Caleb is looking a bit more scary than uh, than. <laughs> Then Gus, <laughs> I think, wow, this guy, his arms are massive, amazing, wow, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so Oksana said that this research should be studied by branding people. Yeah, I mean, th there are psychologists who specifically do branding to choose the right names for things, and they they take all of these things into account. Um, okay, so listen, let, let's play let's play another game. Let's play another game uh, before um, be, before before we go to the speed English. Okay, uh, so when let me just do the, the camera. Um, where's my mouse gone? Oh. so. When this class finishes, we're gonna go on to Zoom. Okay, the link, the link is down in the description box. We're gonna go into Zoom and we're gonna play some speed English. So you're gonna go into a room and you're gonna have a conversation about a specific subject, and then we're gonna switch rooms. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna play a game like that. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me uh, let, let's do some uh, let's do some drawing games. Uh, this is some drawing games. Yeah, 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 okay. Let me find a good one. Some of these I don't even know myself. Uh, okay, okay, this is an interesting one. I don't think this is a very, probably a very well-known expression. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's have a look. And see if I can draw this. Okay. Coleman's mustard. Coleman's mustard is the best mustard for a sandwich. It's just the best. It's absolutely the best. Let me see if I can draw the other thing I need to draw. Oh my god, I have no idea how to draw this. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> uh, uh, more or less, right? Yeah, something like that. Ooh, wow. Okay. <laughs> the, these are, by the way, these are scissors, okay? Just so, just so... To be clear, these are scissors. So, does um, does anybody here know what uh, what this expression is in English? Coleman's mustard with some scissors. Thank you, Susanta. I I also feel like it's a, like it's a beautiful thing. Ooh. Ah, oh, that. <laughs> no, no, Mahmoud, it's not that. The scissors. Um, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to Eugene later. Oh my God, Mulatovic fifteen. Very good, sir. That's amazing. 
Absolutely amazing. Furman MP as well. Very good. Uh, really, really fantastic. Oh, that. Okay, so we've even got a definition here. Cut the mustard. This is an expression in English. Uh, let me put it in a sentence, for example. He doesn't cut the mustard. Uh, the, 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 this, uh, or this book. Uh, okay, so this is, um, two examples. Okay, two examples. Um, to cut the mustard, beads, platoon gamer, means to reach or surpass the design standard or performance, right? So basically, um, imagine if you, you buy you buy a telephone, but the telephone doesn't make phone calls, okay? What, what do you want what do you want your telephone to do you want your telephone to make phone calls and it doesn't it doesn't reach that 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 kind of goal that standard it doesn't cut the mustard you say the telephone doesn't cut the mustard <clears throat> or maybe I could say you know this this anatomical model doesn't have enough detail here you know in the larynx so it doesn't cut the mustard basically it's like saying it's not it's not good enough. And what's interesting is that, you know, thinking about it, it's always a, like a negative thing. You cannot, you don't say it in a, you say, you don't use it in a positive way. You don't say, this really cuts the mustard. Really cuts the mustard. I don't think that people use it in a, in a positive way ever. It's always negative. Um, right. <clears throat> Basically, it doesn't, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Okay, let's do, let's do one more because I'm, I'm losing my voice. I'm sorry, guys. So, um, we're going to do one more and then I'm going to take a little break and I'll see you in the, in the Zoom room. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's do one more. Um. Okay, okay. This is going to be very difficult for me to draw. Okay. Uh, oh, man. Remember, I'm not an artist. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, that's meant to be, that's meant to be an I, by the way. That's an I. <laughs> what do you want? I can't, I can't be an English teacher and Picasso. Come on. So does anybody, okay, so the, the important thing, the important thing here is which, which part of the eye, which part of the eye is, is uh, doing this, okay? Ooh, ooh, Rod, Ro, Rogerio, 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 you legend, very nice, sir, very nice. Very nice. Uh, it is to raise eyebrows. Ooh, so it's it's a it's a verb, right? So you can conjugate you can conjugate this, right? You can say, for example, he really raised eyebrows, or um, or the opposite, right? You can say, I didn't raise any eyebrows. Right. So, 
So you can see, yeah, we can conjugate it, we can use it uh, however we want, right? And well, what does it mean, right? Basically, if um, when you raise your eyebrows, you're like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> um, you know, you know. Basically, to raise eyebrows means that you're you're creating you're creating surprise or shock in other people, right? So, imagine if I if I walk if I walk into a supermarket naked, I probably raise eyebrows. People are like, damn, what the, what the hell? Oh, eyebrows are raised. Right? <laughs> Why is this guy naked in the fruit and veg section? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um, you know, so, so, and, uh, <laughs> and this reminds me, this reminds me of that really bad joke. Because uh, I love, I love dad jokes, right? The joke is, um, I don't <laughs> oh my god <clears throat> cuz you know some some women you know some women they don't have they don't have eyebrows you know maybe they're very fair like my mum for example she's a, a redhead so her eyebrows are very fair you know they're blonde you you can't see them so a lot of women you know they have to they have to draw them on right have to draw them on um, and, and, and so the joke is this, right? I, I told my wife that she drew her eyebrows on too high and sh she seemed surprised. <laughs> oh God. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh my God. Okay. That's it. I'm done. I'm absolutely done. Um, so listen, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna take ten minutes. I'm gonna take a ten minute break. I'm gonna go over to um, I'm gonna take I'm gonna go over to Zoom. So at twelve o'clock CET. So in in thirteen minutes, I'll see you on Zoom. Uh, we're gonna do some speed English. Um, so guys, thank you very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it, and uh, I'll, I'll see you again tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be feeling even better. I'll be feeling amazing. All right, lots of love, guys. Lots of love. Bye.